Hello, this is Gabi from Blue Bonnet Crafters and in this video I want to show you how you can weave a rectangular triangle on a square loom. This is our uh, square 2 inch fine set loom and you can already see that the sample um, triangle is woven pretty much half of what the square is and i'll show you how to do this this is not a completely new method um there are tons of videos and instructions available online but i have heard from several people that they really would like to see how to weave a triangle on this particular loom so that's what we're going to do today um i'm using paint box cotton for ply which is a relatively um no cotton yarn. Um, I wanted to try it out. It's a little bit thinner than uh, the Schepius Katona, but it weaves up as beautiful as uh, as others. Um, and it's a little bit thinner, as I said, but it will show us nicely today um, how how to do the the motions. Okay, let's clean up here a little bit, make some space, and get ready. So this is what we're going to do on this loom. All you need is uh, weaving tools and I'm using the locker hook. You can uh, very much use a crochet hook and the weaving needle as well. Um, but you also need an extra weaving needle or a thin needle uh, as a guide for weaving the triangle. Let me zoom in a little bit. Think this will do. Um, we position the loom so that the starting and the end lines um, go to the left and the right and then we take the, the helping needle and put it across like this. And so it's, it's just one up from the corner pins right here. Okay? So and now, because we will be weaving back and forth horizontally, uh, it's just a convenience thing. You can you can weave any way you want, but I want to show it uh, weaving back and forth horizontally. Uh, we will turn the loom around like this, okay? So you have the the starting and the end points facing towards you and away from you and then the little openings that we use on the fine set loom for weaving uh, are horizontally so this is how we will be weaving and this is the shape i'm just putting this over here this is the shape that we're going to weave all right let's get started um, i'm using two times the width as a sewing tail uh, if you don't like it, you don't have to do it. And then you start with a slip stitch, a uh, slip knot, and you put the slip knot on the corner needle that's facing towards you, right here, and tighten it up. All right, and then you leave the working yarn to along the knee, uh, pretty much parallel to the needle around the pin that is far away the farthest away and the next pin to the right like this okay and i show you this so basically and go back to the beginning to the point it's pretty much like what you're doing with your regular weaving when you get started so uh, or close to not exactly so you start here facing where you sit or work and then you go away around that outermost pin and the one to the right that looks something like this go back to the beginning around the pin that's the next available pin on the right and go around it okay and you can see how i'm holding the working yarn with my left hand here and now we start to weave. 
using my locker hook and you always start over um, you know if you work on another loom where, where the pin spacing is wider you can certainly weave right here but since we are working on a fine set I do all my weaving right here so I always start over and go under the needle and the supporting thread fetch the yarn and pull it through and then I go around the next available pin facing towards me. So this looks like this. Then I take the thread and carry it up to the next available pin away from me. Okay. And that pretty much, and then you can tighten it. Don't tighten it too much put this over here don't tighten it too much uh, if you weave loosely you will benefit from it once you get closer here to the tip all right this is our first woven row and uh, that's almost all there is to it we'll just repeat from here so I weave here between the pins that give me a little bit more space always start over over under over this time Fetch the working thread, pull it through, and now I'm weaving here at the top. Go over the next available pin, take the yarn, and guide it through to the next available pin at the bottom. All right? Can you see how it shapes? Let's do this again. We start over, under, over, under this time. Fetch the working thread, pull it through. And since we're working at the bottom, we go over the next available pin at the bottom first. Then take the working thread and leave it to the top. Here we go. So you see that we're working once, you know, wherever the working thread is, that's where we will weave first. So working thread is here right now. So that's where we will weave over, under, over, under. Fetch the working thread over the next available pin. And then we guide it down to the next available pin at the bottom or closer towards us. And now the working thread is here at the bottom. Okay. Over, under, over, under, over, under. Fetch the working thread. This is where we're working and we guide it to the other side. Here we go. We'll just get a little bit more yarn ready here. Okay. Over, under, over, under, over, under. Fetch the working thread. Weaving at the top, guide it down to the next available pin at the bottom. Let me do one more. It starts to look a little bit quirky like this. And that's understandable because here we have just this, this as a guide, we just have the needle. Okay, no pins. And what you can do is with the end of your of your tool or with a needle or anything. Just slide up those woven lines until they are about straight. You can slide them in a little bit more so that you have more space for weaving. You see this? Okay, and that already looks pretty good, doesn't it? All right, let's keep going. Over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. 
stretch the working set, pull it through, next available pin on the working side, slide it up to the bottom, uh, slide it up to the, to the top or away from you. And you know, the farther you get into the weaving, the more you want to pack after each uh, step that you weave over, under, over, under, over, under, over, under. And here where the needle is, you will notice over time that, you know, with one row you weave over and with the other row you weave under. And that's quite all right, that's normal, okay? Just at the beginning, you always go over, but since you're adding threads uh, at the side where the needle is, the, the, the guiding needle here, um, it will change over under all the way across this time it's under you're fetching the working thread and pulling it through we're working on this side first and then we guide to the other side and use the back of our tool to slide in our work. Okay, we have a few more rows to do over under all the way across. Fetch the working thread, pulling it through. Go over the side where the working thread came from first and then guide it to the other side. And of course, you know, those lines are getting shorter. And then you pack and you can pack in a little bit more so that you have more space here for the weaving over under always how we start remember to always start with over it might be a little bit difficult to see that's why I'm putting so much emphasis on uh, starting with the over all the time going over here and sliding over there and packing them apart and you know at this point you can always adjust them later on so you don't really have to worry too much uh, you know how you pack it doesn't have to be straight so um one more time, you can see here, all the pins are starting to have threads around it. There's one more that needs to be done. So this is like over, under, all the way across. Fetch the working thread and pull it through. Okay, this is where we came from. around it and you know if you are not sure it is okay to just pull through a little bit more and then straighten it out and figure it out how you have to put it over and then you can adjust the tension afterwards okay so similar to the continuous strand weaving when we do the the square we now have to lock let me see if I can show you this is a little bit closer so there are now two rows that look the same. And similar to the continuous strand uh, weaving method for squares, we need to lock in our weaving so that it doesn't unravel by weaving just one more row across here. So how do we do this? Um, you know, just as an estimate, I wrap one once around the whole room and snip it that gives me enough to weave across and a little bit more for the for the weaving uh, for the sewing the pieces together 
and you have two options you can pretty much just weave one more and pull it all the way through or you can thread it or if you have a, a threading needle at this point um, a, a weaving needle you can also just uh, sew it uh, I thread my locker hook and I will uh, sew just between those two right two lines Let me just make sure that you can see sorry for the phone and then um, I'm actually sliding up the, the support needle a little up this point um, to help with the with the uh, with the weaving and then I just weave across one more row sorry for the phone I forgot to unplug it but I'm not recording this re-recording this um, you should be fine so I wove across the last line and you just pull it through like you do with weave when you weave the square and here you go there's your triangle you can straighten out a little bit rows and now comes the fun part you can turn your loom around like this and to take your triangle off everything is now locked there's nothing else you need to do and to take it off what I like to do is I just lift the supporting needle like this and it beautifully takes off the triangle and then you can pull out the needle the supporting needle and there is your triangle you can release carefully the slip knot that you made at the beginning and here you go again this one uh, the yarn is a little bit thin that's why why um was a little bit thicker yarn it would fill it in a little bit more but you clearly have a really good uh, triangle shape at this point that you can use for beautiful um, quilt uh, designs. I hope you found this useful and that you will enjoy making squares and triangles on your little square fine set loom. Thank you for watching.